using the Lord's name in vain. Now, Brother Rob <laughs> sent me a message. Amen. And, you know, because we do take for granted, you know, uh, and, and use the Lord's name in, in vain without even thinking. You know, um, so some of the things that Rob has sent me was, <laughs> holy cow. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh my God. Now you know that's one of the ones we generally use. I mean, everybody uses that. You know, even if you're not serving the God of Israel, people still say that. Oh my God. Um, no, I can't say that one, Rob. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That is another one that people say. You know, when they uh, using the name of the Lord. They say, now if you're walking in righteousness, then using the name of the Lord, you wouldn't be using the name of the Lord in vain. But if you're not walking in his word, then you are using the Lord's name in vain. And most people don't even realize it when they're doing it. But this is a sin when you use the Lord's name in vain. It is a sin. So let's go there. Let's go to Exodus, the 20th chapter. Exodus, the 20th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and start reading, brother. Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Uh -huh. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Because this is the only true and living God right here, the God of Israel. Right. And when I say God, I, it's a uniplural word. Um, it comes from the word Elohim, which is plural, and meaning, meaning there's more than one. Okay? And I'm going to show you what I mean uh, by this in a minute. Not three, two. Yes, sir. There's no God, is God the Father, God the Son, but no God the Holy Ghost. And I know a lot of people get upset about that, but oh well. The Holy Ghost is not God. But read that verse again. Yes, sir. Verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Uh -huh. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, uh -huh. or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. So he don't want he doesn't want you to make any images nowhere. He even went into the water and said, "Don't make no images from the waters." Skip down to verse seven. Skip to verse seven. We're gonna get to what we come for. Verse seven. Go ahead and read it. Seven. Uh huh. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Uh-huh. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. So he said, don't take his name in vain. Don't use his name in vain. So he said he will not hold him guiltless. So if you are not guiltless, then what have you done? You have sinned. Right? And so if you so it's a sin is going to bring about what? Death. Death. So, you know, a lot of times we don't look at this. Uh, particular scripture right here where it says thou shalt not take the Lord thy, the, the Lord thy God's name in vain because the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taking his name in vain. So you run around talking about oh my God and Jesus this and Jesus that and you don't do anything that he tells you to do. And that is used, that is one of the ways of you using the Lord God's uh, name in vain. You call upon his name, you don't do anything. Let me just show you. First, before we go to uh, Psalms 111, we're going to look up a couple of definitions here. So, uh, we're going to look up name in vain. And so, we're going to World Book Encyclopedia. I'm sorry, World Book Dictionary. Word, name in vain. What does it say? Yes, sir. This is the World Book Dictionary, page 1380. Says, um, take a name in vain. To use a name properly, God's name, and hence any other entitled to respect, 
lightly or irreverently. Irrever irreverently. Irreverently. Yes, uh -huh. sir. Thou shalt, Irreverent. Yes, sir. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So now, so it's using the Lord's name in a disrespectful manner. Because if you, like I said, we're going to look up that word too, uh, irreverent, in a minute. But if you're using the Lord's name and you're not doing what he said, what he tells you to do, then you are using this, and you know you just throwing it out there. Oh my God. Lord Jesus. You just throwing it, that's being disrespectful. That's, that is being disrespectful. Let's go now, we're going we're gonna to look up that word irrelevant. Irrelevant. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Y'all know I can't talk that well. All right, this is uh, Miriam's Webster Collegiate Dictionary. Irreverent, that's the name. Yes, yes sir. This is page 663. Mm -hmm. Irreverent. Irreverent. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all stop. The hard one to take. Irreverent. Yeah. Uh, it says lacking proper respect. Lacking proper respect. So when you just throw the Lord's name out there, and attribute things to his name, and you're not doing it, and you're doing it in a, in a, uh, 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 a disrespectful way, that is sin. So you might want to think about that the next time you say, oh my God. Or you want to holler out the name Jesus. You might want to think about that, because the Lord will not hold him guiltless who uses his name in vain. Now let me show you something about the Lord's name. Let's go to Psalms 111, and we're going to read verse 9. Psalm 111 and verse 9. Because his name is holy. Yes, sir. Psalm 111 and verse 9. And we, you know, we as uh, servants of God, and as people, period, we should have more respect for God's name. Now, I know, you know, come on. I, I, I should have wrote some of the names down because you got so many names that uh, that the, uh, the Hebrews are calling the Lord now. And so you got Yahweh and uh, uh, Ahia and Ahiashai and all these different type names that the Israelites have for God, which they're calling these names the Father. But I'm going to show you. That's not the Father's name. We're going to show you the Father's name. And so when you and we don't have no problem with Yahweh, Ahia, Ahia Shai. We don't have no problem with Yahshua, Yahweh. We don't have no problem with people got a name when we problem, they got a problem when we call the name Jesus or we say Jehovah. They got a problem with that. Come on, bro. Cause see, we something different. Us Israelites, we, we different from the other ones. We use the name Jehovah. We use the name Jesus. But anyway, um, we had uh, uh, Psalms 111 and verse 9. What does that say? Psalms chapter 111, verse 9. Uh huh. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Uh huh. Holy and reverent is his name. Holy and reverent is his name. His name is holy and reverent, so we just can't be using the word. You know, the, the, the Israelites thought his name, his original name, so sacred, they stopped uttering it. They stopped saying it. And subsequently, that name was lost. Because they used, you know, the tetragram YHWH. Now, can, can anybody pronounce that? In order for you to pronounce that, do some type of pronounce, you got to put some vowels in there. Because nobody in here can read all consonants. That's why it's taken so long for them to read the Dead Sea Scrolls. But I will tell you this. Every name we got, being the children of Israel, we got it from somebody else. Because our language has been lost. Now, so we're going to look up the word reverend real quick. Because, you know, some men call themselves reverend. And I'm like, your name is nowhere near Holy. Yes, sir. All right. This is the World Book Dictionary, volume L through Z, uh, page 1787. Reverend, worthy of great respect. Worthy. This name right here, his name is worthy of great respect. God's name. 
But I'm going to show you what God we deal with in the Old Testament, and I'm going to show you which one we deal with in the New Testament. So now let's go to uh, let's go to uh, uh, Psalms 135. Psalms 135. Psalm 135, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 13. Psalm 135 and 13. Everybody got it? No. Go ahead, start reading. Psalms chapter 135, verse 13. Thy name, O Lord, endure forever. Uh-huh. And thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. And thy memorial throughout all generations. So he said you know, his name is going to endure forever. And his memorial throughout all generations. Go ahead and read it. For the Lord will judge his people. Uh-huh. And he will repent himself concerning his servants. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, uh -huh. the work of men's hands. Uh -huh. They have mouths, but they speak not. See, all those other gods, they have mouths, but they speak not. Our God came down from heaven, walked upon the earth. Yes, sir. You understand? Uh, preached to the poor, fed the hungry, raised the dead. This is what our God did. Go ahead and read. They have mouths, but they speak not. Uh huh. Eyes have they, but they see not. Go ahead. They have ears, but they hear not. Anybody ever heard of these other gods saying anything? Speaking anything? Doing anything? It's only one God that created this man on this earth and created this world. One God. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. They have ears, but they hear not. Uh huh. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> they that make them are like unto them. Uh huh. So is everyone that trusted in them. Uh huh. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. Now, let's go now. Let's because those other gods, they don't, you, you don't hear nothing about these other gods. God can make prophecies. Our God makes prophecies, and then these prophecies come to pass. But these other gods, they don't have no prophecies. People falling down, worshiping them, and everything. Them gods can't do nothing for you. But anyway, let's go to, let's go, I don't want to talk about nobody. Let's go to Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus, the third chapter. You know, I don't want to disrespect nobody else's God, but <laughs> they have eyes, but they cannot see, and mouths, but they cannot talk. Ears that cannot hear. They can't even hear when you pray to them. Gods are no gods, brother. We had Exodus 3 and 1. Exodus 3 and 1. Now the Lord is going to give you his names right here. He's going to give you a couple of names. So Exodus 3 and 1. Exodus 3 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Yes, sir. This is Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Uh-huh. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, uh -huh. and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Uh -huh. Why the bush is not burnt. See, because the Lord has a way of drawing people. You know, Moses looking at this bush, he's like, man, this thing's not burned up. Let me go check this out. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Uh-huh. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, uh -huh. for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Go ahead. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy fathers. I am the God of thy fathers. Go ahead and read. The God of Abraham. Uh-huh. The God of Isaac. Go ahead. And the God of Jacob. I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is the God that we serve. Hallelujah. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go ahead and read. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Uh-huh. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, 
which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, uh -huh. for I know their sorrows. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of, the, out of that land unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, uh -huh. unto the place of, of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Because the Lord took the Canaanite land from a right and gave it to the children of Israel. Skip down to verse 13. Skip to verse 13. Go ahead. 13. Now Moses going to ask him a question. You know, uh, who should I say sent me? Go ahead and read. 13. Uh-huh. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers have sent me unto you. Uh huh. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. I am that I am. Now this covers all times. He said, I am that I am. Go ahead and read. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Uh huh. I am have sent me unto you. Go ahead. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, Go ahead. has sent me unto you. Uh -huh. This is my name forever. This is my name forever. So I just want everybody to understand who we are dealing with. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This is my name forever, uh-huh. And go ahead. This is my memorial unto all generations. And this is my memorial to all generations. Did we read that over in Psalms? His memorial to all generations. His name is Abraham, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This is my name forever and my memorial to all generations. Hallelujah. So now you can't get it mixed up because we just covered all generations, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so you don't get us. We can, you can't get us mixed up with which God that we dealing with. Mm -hmm. The God that say keep my commandments. That's the one we dealing with. Let's go to Isaiah the twelfth chapter. Isaiah the twelfth chapter. Isaiah twelve, and we're gonna pick it up in verse one. Isaiah twelve and one. <laughs> Isaiah 12 and 1. Now we're going to give him an, another name right here. Well, the Bible, Isaiah going to give you another name. I know people who got a problem with this name because we say we use English. So they got a problem with this. But the Lord said, with a stammering lip and another tongue will I speak to this people. Meaning whatever nation I've scattered you in Israel, that's the language that I'm going to speak to you in. Isaiah 12 and 1. Isaiah 12 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 1. Uh-huh. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Thou, though thou was angry with me, uh -huh. thy anger is turned away, and thou comfort comforted me. Uh-huh. Behold. God is my salvation. God is my salvation. Now, pay attention to what you read now. He said, God is my salvation. Go ahead. I will trust and not be afraid. Uh huh. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. Oh, what did he call him? Jehovah. You think God doesn't know what his name is? You know, people act like you got to say Yahweh and uh, Je uh, Jehoiada and uh, um, all these other Hebrew names, supposedly Hebrew. Come on. Right? But every name, like I said earlier, every name that we got, words that we got, we got it from somebody else. And that Yah that you said, that is that comes from the Edomites. Make that plain, brother. So you got even the ones that you say that you, the ones that the Hebrews or the Israelites say that they hate, they using them. Their words, just like we use the ones here in America. We use them, their words, which are English. Mm -hmm. 
So he said, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength. Jehovah, and that is English. That's why we say Jehovah, because we speak English. But let's go now, because I'm going to show you something. Let's go to uh, Philippians, the third chapter, Philippians 3. Let me show you who we deal with, because a lot of times when, uh, when the, uh, people use the, these other names like, look, we don't have no problem with them. <laughs> Ahia, Ahia Shai, and uh, Yaqua, and all these other names, they, but they say they talk about the Father. But the Father, you have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And we're going to show you what the Father's name is. And then, you know, men running around, and I, and I, I would imagine, I ain't going to imagine they were using this name, Jehovah, they was using it in vain. They were using this name, Jehovah, or you want to say Yahweh, or Yahweh, or whatever thing you want to say. They was using his name in vain. The children of Israel were. Just like we people now use the name Jesus in vain. Because you don't really hear nobody praying in the name of Jehovah. You hear nobody praying in the name of Jehovah, Yahweh, and all this. Well, some people might be doing that. <laughs> some of the brothers might be doing that. But they don't understand, though, these names that you're calling, that this is Je these are Jehovah's name, and we're going to show you who Jehovah is. It's not the Father. We're going to Philippians. Philippians, the, uh, Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Philippians 3 and 17. Let's just let me show you something. Go ahead and read. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Uh-huh. Brethren, be followers together of me. Uh-huh. And mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Uh-huh. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping. That they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Go ahead. Whose end is destruction. Uh-huh. Whose God is their belly. Whose God is in their belly. Because see, some people, you know, they got uh, money on their mind, and you understand, and that's their God. You understand? Uh, you know, that's their God. You know, they, they, they uh, uh, want to worship money. I ain't going to speak about those other gods because I don't want nobody to get mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> I just say money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Play it safe. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. 19. Uh-huh. Whose end is destruction. Whose end is destruction. Uh-huh. Whose God is their belly. Uh-huh. And whose glory is in their shame. Go ahead. Who mind earthly things. See, they mind earthly things. Go ahead and read. For our conversation... It's in heaven, uh -huh. from whence also we look for the Savior. Wait a minute, we look for who? The Savior. But didn't he just say, Jehovah was my salvation? Hallelujah. He said, we're looking from heaven, we're looking up to heaven for the Savior. For our conversation in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior. Who is the Savior we're looking for? Go ahead and read. The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. We just told, Isaiah said, uh, Jehovah was his salvation. But now Paul is telling these Philippians that the Lord Jesus is our Savior. Verse 21, go ahead and read. 21. Uh -huh. Who shall change our vile body uh -huh. that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Now wait a minute. Jesus is going to change this vile body and fashion it to his glorious body. He's going to do the same thing for Isaiah and for everybody else that loves his appearance. He's going to change his foul body and fashion it like unto his glorious body. Jesus is. He that eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I'm going to raise him up when? Amen. At the last day. Jesus is going to do this. So who was Isaiah talking about? We're going to show you. Read that verse 21 again. Verse 21. Uh-huh. Who shall change our foul body? That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, uh -huh. according to the working whereby he is able even to do all things now, unto himself. Now, we're going to look up uh, the word Jesus right here. We're going to look up the name Jesus, and we're going to uh, reveal 
Bible dictionary. We're looking up the word or the name Jesus. Yes, sir. This is the Reveal Bible Dictionary Deluxe Color Edition. All right, page 556 says Christ from the Greek word for Messiah. Uh huh. Meaning anointed one. Anointed one? That's what Christ means. Yes, sir. Anointed one. Uh huh. Keep it. You right here? Yeah. Read all that? Oh, at the, oh we started at the top. Yes. All right, let me start that <laughs> over. My bad. Jesus Christ, the central figure of the New Testament and focus of Christian faith. The name indicates his role. The Savior. That's what Jesus means, Savior. Go ahead and read. But look what else is going to say. Go ahead. Yeah, it says the name indicates his role. Jesus from the Hebrew word Yeshua. Uh-huh. Meaning Savior or Yahweh saves. Or who saves? Yahweh saves. Or Yahweh saves. Read that again. I think that went over somebody's head. Okay. Read that one more time. Okay, it says... The name indicates his role, uh -huh. Jesus, from the Hebrew word Yahshua. Yahshua. See, we don't have no problem with people saying Yahshua or uh, Yahqua, these different names. You, we don't have no problem with that. People got a problem with us because we say his name in English. But that's what language we speak. I don't speak Hebrew. <laughs> I don't speak Yiddish. Because that really, that's what they speak in Yiddish. Come on. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. It says, Jesus from the Hebrew word Yahshua, meaning Savior, or Yahweh saves, uh -huh. and Christ from the Greek word for Messiah, meaning anointed one. The Christ word means what? Anointed one. But you see what it said? Yahweh saves. Just like in, in Yahweh, the, the, uh, the English name for that is who? Jehovah. We're going to read it. The, the English name for Yahweh is Jehovah. Now we're going to look up the name Yahweh. We're going to start right here and then read what's here. Got it? Yeah, this is uh, Zondervan's Bible Dictionary. We're looking up the word Yahweh. Now remember, Jesus Christ or Jesus means what? Yahweh saves. Right. That's one of his titles. Go ahead. Yahweh says, see God also, Y-H-W-H below. Uh oh Y-H-W-H. Now, this is supposed to be God's original name, Y-H-W-H. But who can pronounce that now? Anybody in here can pronounce that? The, the Israelites thought it so sacred, they stopped uttering the pronunciation of these consonants. And notice something, you don't see no vowels in there. So how come I can't say Jesus in English, but you get away with saying Yah? You understand what I'm saying? You got vowels in there. You know, the vowels didn't come along into the Hebrew uh, 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 writings until around the 5th, 6th century. So how do you get away with saying Yah and all these? And I can't say English, Jesus. And then you using his name in vain. I'm going to show you. Go ahead and read. All right. Y-H-W-H, uh -huh. the te tetragrammaton, the, the four consonants standing for the ancient Hebrew name for God commonly referred to as Jehovah. See, his name, Yahweh, is commonly referred to as Jehovah because we speak what? We speak English. So that's why we say Jehovah. But if you want to say Yahweh, that's fine. You want to say Y-H-W-H, and then pronounce, some people pronounce that Yaqua, but I'm like, why do you know that? Did some ancient Hebrew come back to tell you that? That's, what it's, uh, that's how you pronounce it? Otherwise, how do you know that? We go ahead and read. Yes, sir, back at the top. Y-H-W-H, the tetramagraton, excuse me, tetragrammaton, excuse me. Mm -hmm. The four consonants standing for the ancient Hebrew name, for God, commonly referred to as Jehovah or Yahweh, uh -huh. YHWH was considered to considered too sacred to pronounce. It was too sacred to pronounce by the Israelites. They, you know, they think that that name so sacred, they stopped pronouncing it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And they use the word Adonai in its place. But go ahead and read. Yes, sir. So Adonai, my Lord, mm -hmm. was substituted in reading when eventually a vowel system was invented. Now, so now here comes the vowel system, right? Because uh, uh, the Hebrew writings were on all consonants. But now here the Miserites, later on in around the uh, 6th, 7th century, 5th, 6th century, put the vowel system in the Hebrew uh, letters. But go ahead and read. Yes, sir. It says, when eventually a vowel system was invented, since the Hebrew had forgotten how to pronounce Y-H-W-H. See, they forgot how to pronounce it. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. They substituted the vowels for Adonai, uh -huh. making Jehovah a form first attested at the beginning of the 12th century. So this is when AD. the name Jehovah came, because you know, English didn't come along until around the 800s. So around 1200 something AD, uh, he called Jehovah, the name Jehovah. Go ahead. That's it, bro. That's it? That's All right, it. now, so I just want to, you know, set a little groundwork for what we're about to uh, deal with. Okay, so now, and so the reason why we say it in English, let's go to Malachi, the first chapter, Malachi 1. Malachi, the first chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Malachi 1 and 11. Now look at what Malachi prophesied here. Malachi 1 and 11. And you know, all people use the name of the Lord in vain. You got the Edomite Jews, they use his name in vain. Some of them don't even believe in Jesus. Right? Then you got uh, people that call themselves Muslim. They, they, they say they believe in Jesus, but they still use his name in vain. You let, you let, when people get sick, who they call on? Jesus. They call on Jesus. Even the guy that started the Satan church. He was a Satan worshiper, right? You know, he started a big, he got a, 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 a large congregation, thousands of people on TV and everything, right? When he was on his deathbed, guess whose name he was calling? Jesus. <laughs> That's whose name he was calling Jesus. But you been you 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 using his name in vain because you didn't believe in him while you were walking around teaching about Satan and loving Satan. Now you call him using his name in vain. But this is why we use the word Jesus and not a high uh, and Yahweh and all these other different names that the Israelites using now. Which they're getting it from somebody else because every language we got, we got it from somebody else. And those letters that you say it in, that's in English. But anyway, Malachi 1 and 11, what does it say? Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. Uh-huh. For from the rising of the sun, even into the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Now, wait a minute. He said, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. What name does the Gentiles use? Jesus. Jesus. And then in the Old Testament, what they use? Jehovah. Where do you think we got the name Jehovah from? That comes from the Gentiles. The name Jesus, that comes from the Gentiles. We understand that they weren't using the name Jesus in the first century. We understand that. Yes, sir. They weren't saying the name Jehovah during the time of Moses in the 14, uh, 50, uh, 1450 B.C. We understand they weren't saying that. But these names were translated into different languages. That's why when you see Jesus in Spanish, what do they call him? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. If you go to China, what do they call him? Jesus. And then some parts of Africa, they, they call him Jesus. But they're using his name in vain. Because a lot of them that's using his name, they still won't keep his commandments. Make that plan, bro. They still don't want to keep his commandments. So go ahead and read that Malachi 1 and 11 again. I look at my brothers and sisters that go to church tomorrow on Sunday. Look how they're using the Lord's name in vain. Jesus this, and Jesus that, and he said, well, do you keep God's law? Well, no, we ain't got to do, we ain't got to keep God's law. And he's the one who gave it to you. Verse 
verse 11. Go ahead and read it again. Read it again. Yes, sir. Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. Uh-huh. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Uh-huh. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name. Go ahead. And a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen. He said, my name shall be great among the heathen. What does heathen mean? Nations. What name is great among all the nations? Is it Yaqwa? Jesus. It is Jesus. That is the name that is great among the nations. Not just the Gentiles, but the nations. You say the word Jesus, people know who you're talking about. I don't care what country you go to. They know what you, who you are talking about. From the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name. And a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, among the nations. Go ahead and finish that. Say up the Lord of hosts. Now, let's go now. Let's go to uh, Exodus, the sixth chapter. We're going to pick that name back up again, uh, Jehovah again. Exodus, the sixth chapter. Exodus 6. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. Exodus 6 and 1. Is it a little chilly in here? Exodus 6 and 1. It's a little heat, brother. <laughs> Exodus 6 and 1. Go ahead and read. Exodus chapter 6, verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. Uh huh. But with a strong hand shall he let them go. Uh huh. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Uh huh. And I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob. By the name of God Almighty. Uh-huh. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. Uh-oh, we got another name there. He said, God Almighty. He said, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known unto them. Let's go to Leviticus, the 19th chapter. We're going to continue to say Jehovah. If you want to say Yahweh, say Yahweh. If you want to say uh, uh, Yahshua, you can say Yahshua. Well, we speak English, so we're going to say Jesus. Leviticus, the 19th chapter. Leviticus 19. I remember I asked my teacher, you know, why don't we say any of these other names? He said, because we speak English. That was good enough for me. We speak English. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. It is really something that people that use the name Jesus and use the name Jehovah, but then they don't want to use, do anything that he tells them to do. Using his name in vain. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. Leviticus 19 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 1. Uh-huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying. Skip down to verse 11. Skip to verse 11. Ye shall not steal. Uh-huh. Neither deal falsely. Neither lie one to another. Uh-huh. And ye shall not swear by my name. And my name falsely. You shall not swear by my name falsely. You know how, especially us, Israel, you know, I swear for God. <laughs> no, you're lying. <laughs> we quick to say that. I swear for God, man. No, you're lying. So he said, and ye shall not swear by my name falsely. You know, people want to, because you know, some people, they think, well, you know, if you're using the Lord's name, then he's not lying. But then he's still lying because he know you're going to go for it. That's why he's doing it. That's why he's swearing by the name of the Lord falsely because he know he's going to go for it. But you know, when you swear by the name of the Lord falsely, don't you know that that is sin? You are guilty before God. <laughs> And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, uh-huh. Neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. Uh-huh. I am the Lord. He said, don't profane the name of the Lord thy God. You are profaning his name when you swear by his name falsely. And you know you lie. 
Let's go now. Let's go to uh, let's go to Jeremiah the seventh chapter because the children of Israel they were good for this. Now you know here here it is that in this generation we swear by the name of Jesus falsely, but in this generation we're about to read in Jeremiah they swear by the name Jehovah falsely, or if you want to say Yahweh, whatever. Jeremiah, Jeremiah seven and one. Jeremiah seven and one. Because they didn't have the name Jesus during this time. Jesus didn't come along until the fir around uh, the first century. So they were swearing by the name Jehovah falsely. We had Jeremiah 7 and 1. Jeremiah 7 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 1. Uh-huh. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word uh -huh. and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Do you see who he is the God of? Yes, sir. The God of Israel. Go ahead and read. Amend your ways and your doings. Uh-huh. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. Go ahead. Trust ye not in lying words. Trust ye not in lying. Don't come, don't go come up to the Lord. Are you, are you a liar? He said, don't trust in lying words. Uh-huh. Say, the temple of the Lord. The uh -huh. temple of the Lord. Go ahead. The temple of the people. You know, because I mean, some of the people, Lord's people want to swear by it. They were swear by the temple. Yes, sir. You understand? Swear by the Lord. Swear by the temple. Anything that people would go for, they were swear by it. Mainly the Lord. He said, trust ye not in lying words, saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of, uh, the, temple of the Lord are these. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment uh -huh. between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the Go fatherless, uh -huh. and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place. Uh -huh. Neither walk after other gods to your hurt. To your what? Your hurt. See, that, that's that's what Israel's problem, big, biggest problem is. Walking, after, especially in this generation, we want to serve everybody's God but our own. Everybody, then if you don't let us into your church, we're going to protest, we're going to march. And you're going to let us in then. <laughs> but go ahead and repeat. It says, shed not innocent blood in this place, uh -huh. neither walk after other gods to your hurt. Go ahead. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your father uh -huh. forever and See, ever. See, if we had just deal with the Lord, if our forefathers had just deal with the Lord, commanded them to do, we would still be in our land. Yes, Even told them, look, if you just keep the Sabbath, I'll let you stay in the land. But Israel would not uh, adhere to it. Verse 8, go ahead and read it. Behold. Uh-huh. Ye trust in lying words. See, Israel, they trust in lying words. Prophesy unto a lot us lies. That's what Isaiah the 30th chapter said. That Israel wanted to prophesy unto us lies and deceit. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Behold, ye trust in lying words. Uh-huh. Which cannot profit. Which cannot profit. You know, you go off lying and stuff and swear by the name of the Lord. That's not going to profit you. Look at what they were doing. Go ahead and read. Will ye steal, uh -huh. murder, and commit adultery, uh -huh. and swear falsely? And swear falsely? You know, they, they must have had a, a big problem with this. <laughs> so big of a problem, the Lord had it listed in the commandments. Don't swear by my name falsely. So now, you see we said, will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely? Go ahead and read. And burn incense uh -huh. unto Baal. Go ahead. And walk out the other gods whom ye know not. Oh, man, they were stooped in paganism. Sure enough. They were stooped in sin. Burning incense unto Baal and walking out the other gods whom you know not. But these other gods, they can't hear, they can't see, they can't talk, they can't do nothing. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. Uh-huh. And come and stand before me in this house. He said, look, y'all doing all this and then you're going to come and stand in my house? And you doing all these things, swearing by me falsely and, and worshiping these other gods, and then you're going to come stand in my house? 
Man, Israel has some nerve, boy. Go ahead and breathe. Yes, sir. And uh -huh. come and stand before me in this house, uh -huh. which is called by my name, uh -huh. and say, we are delivered to do all these abominable and abominations. And our people are still doing these things. Go, put, put, just wait till tomorrow. And look how Israel, you know, the, the name of that church is called by the name of the Lord. But they doing all this wickedness and these traditions of men in these churches. Whoa. That's why Revelation's over there calling the, har the, uh, the harlot's house. Let me leave that alone. Hmm. I don't want to talk about nobody. It's written. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse 11. Uh-huh. Is this house, which is called by my name, uh -huh. become a den of robbers? Go ahead. In your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. He said, look, I'm looking at you. I see what you guys are doing. You know, the Lord is watching. He's watching all of us. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, let's go to Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Now, look at some of the things that they were doing. I'm talking about the prophets were doing and the priests, the teachers. Look at what they were doing. We had Jeremiah 23 and 9. Jeremiah 23 and 9. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 9. Uh-huh. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. Uh-huh. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whose wine has overcome. Uh-huh. Because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. Go ahead. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth. He said because of swearing, the land mourneth. Uh-huh. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, uh -huh. and their course is evil, and their force is not right. Go ahead. For both prophet and priest uh -huh. are profane. He said they both profane. They both are defiled. The prophet and the priest. Go ahead. Yay. Uh-huh. In my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Go ahead. Wherefore, their ways shall be unto them as a slippery as slippery ways in the darkness. Uh -huh. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them. See, you, see even, even today, you're not going to get away with teaching wickedness in the Lord's house. You're not going to get away with it. He said their ways will be unto them slippery ways yes, in the darkness. They shall be driven on. And fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them. Evil upon them. Look at all the people that call themselves uh, worshiping God, the God of Israel, the God of the Bible. They call themselves uh, following after Christ, but are using his name in vain. Too many, brother. Yes, sir. We're talking about, you know, even the Catholic Church, it's a billion, over a billion of them. Mm, teach. And we talk about Christians. It's about 300 and 400 and something million Christians that are using the name of the Lord in vain. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Say, you know, uh, I'm going to bring evil upon them. Just like if you know if he did it to the children of Israel, what he's going to do to every other nation that's using his name in vain. He's going to bring evil upon them. Go ahead and read. Well, I will bring evil upon them, uh -huh. even a year of their visitation, saith the Lord. Go ahead. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal uh -huh. and caused my people Israel to err. Oh, this is causing the people to err? Yes, sir. The prophets and the priests, they caused the people to err? To go astray? Go ahead and read. Verse 14. Uh-huh. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem uh -huh. and horrible things. They commit adultery uh -huh. and walk in lies. Go ahead. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers. Everything is going to be all right. Just put some money in the plate. Whoa. <laughs> the Lord is going to bless you. No matter what you're doing, the Lord is going to bless you. Using the name of the Lord in vain. Telling people that God is going to bless them despite them doing wickedness. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. 
They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers. Uh huh. That none does return from the wickedness, from Who his is? wickedness. Uh huh. See they, that none does return from his wickedness. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. They're all of them unto me, as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof, as Gomorrah. Uh huh. Skip the verse. Uh, skip the verse. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Uh huh. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Uh huh. Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. Uh huh. They make you vain. They make you vain. If they vain, yes, sir. And they teach it in the name of, 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 of the Lord in vain. Mm -hmm. What is that going to make you if you listen to them and follow after them? The same. Right. You gonna be vain, and you gonna be called upon the name of the Lord in vain, and using the name of the Lord in vain. Make it plain, brother. Read that verse one more time. Verse sixteen. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Thus said the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy to you. Go ahead. They make you vain. They make you vain, uh-huh. They speak a vision of their own heart. They speak a vision of what? Their own heart. Their own mind. That's what they're giving you. Something popping in their mind, oh, that's the word of the Lord. But no, the word of the Lord is right here in this book. If we don't say it in this book, then those are your words. And you are speaking vanity. Go ahead and read. They speak a vision of their own heart uh -huh. and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Go ahead. They say still unto them that despise me. Uh -huh. The Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. Uh -huh. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, uh -huh. no evil shall come upon you. Skip down to verse 20. Skip down to verse 20. Because see, that's what the church has done. They have given people a false sense of security. And so therefore, you got this false sense of security, you gonna think you're thinking, you know, I ain't gotta do nothing, so you know, hey, I'm all right. But that's not true. That's what this, the church has done to people. They have given them a false sense of security. Skip down to verse 20. Go ahead and read it. Verse 20. Uh-huh. The anger of the Lord shall not return. Until he hath executed, uh -huh. and till he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. Uh -huh. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. Go ahead. I have not sent these prophets. You said I have not sent these prophets. Uh huh. Yet they ran. Yet they ran. They still. He said I haven't sent them, but they still going, still doing this. Go ahead and read. I have not spoken to them. Uh huh. Yet they prophesy. Go ahead. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words. Caused my people to hear what? My words. My words. Caused the people to hear the, the words of the Lord. Because if you hear the words of the Lord, then you would understand that you shouldn't be using the name of the Lord in vain. Yes, sir. You understand? You can't just be using that name loosely. You know, his name should have some respect on it. Holy and reverend is his name. That's right. Now the Israelites, which were uh, 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 during the ancient time, they thought his name so sacred, they wouldn't even utter it. How much more should we honor his name? How much more should we honor his name and respect his name? Instead of using it all willy-nilly. Oh my God. The blood of Jesus on you. All type of sayings men use now, using the Lord's name in vain. Go ahead and read. And had caused my people to hear my words. Uh-huh. Then they should have turned them from their evil way, uh -huh. from the evil of their doing. Now, skip to verse 28. Skip to verse 28. Go ahead. 28. Uh-huh. The prophet that have a dream, let him tell a dream. Uh-huh. And he that hath my word, uh -huh. let him speak my word faithfully. Let him speak my word faithfully. If he's got my word, let him speak it faithfully. Finish that. What is the chafe to the wheat? Say of the Lord. Now, let's go now. Let's go to Proverbs, the 30th chapter. Proverbs, the 30th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Proverbs 30 and 4. Because this is why I say, you know, they call in all of these. Uh, so-called Hebrew names, but they think that they are speaking about the Father. They are not speaking about the Father. They are speaking about the one that 
was Jehovah and later became known as Jesus. And we're going to show you the Father's name in this lesson. Because like I said earlier, we speak English. And so that's the name that we're going to use, the ones that's in English. Because otherwise, you got all these different Hebrew names that's floating around. Now, who's telling the truth? Who got the right name? Who's got the right name? We have Proverbs 30, Proverbs 30 and 4. Proverbs 30 and verse 4. Will you get it? Go ahead and read it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4. Uh-huh. Who have ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fist? Uh -huh. Who have bound the water in a garment? Who have established all the ends of the earth? Who have established, now who established all the ends of the earth? Jesus, Jesus. did. Yes, sir. Yes, Go sir. ahead and read. What is his name? Uh-huh. And what is his son's name? What is his name? And what is his son's name? Uh huh. If thou can tell. If thou can tell. Can you tell? Yes, sir. A lot of people can't tell what his name is, what God's name is, and what his son's name is. Read that verse again. What verse yet? Verse 4. Uh -huh. On the top. Uh huh. Whoever ascended up into heaven or descended, who have gathered the wind in his fist, uh huh. Who have bound the water in a garment. Go ahead. Who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? Uh huh. And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Keep reading. Every word of God is pure. Uh huh. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his word. Uh huh. Lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So you do not want to be found a liar by God. Because liars and murderers and adulterers, all of them are going in the lake of fire. Right. That's where they're going, in the lake of fire. But go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. Two things have I required of uh, thee. Go ahead. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Oh, you see what, it, you see what, the, uh, uh, what Solomon wrote here? He said, remove from me vanity and lies. Because speaking the name of the Lord, even speaking the name of the Lord in vain, that the Lord said he's not going to hold you guilty, guiltless for that. That is a sin. So he said, remove far from me vanity. Things that's not worth anything. Things that don't have no effect. Remove that from me. If it's not affecting me in a good way or in a spiritual way, remove it from me. Amen. Go ahead and read. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Uh-huh. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Go ahead. Feed me with food convenient for me. Uh-huh. Lest I be full and deny thee and say. Go ahead. Who is the Lord? See, because, you know, some people, that's how they do. You know what Je uh, Jeshurun did? He waxed fat and started kicking. Mm -hmm. The Lord brought him out of slavery, uh, brought him into the land. He got fat and he started kicking. And he's like, well, who is the Lord? <laughs> and that's what most people do. When the Lord done blessed them and gave them what they want, and now they're living high on a hog, as we say, and living good, then they turn around and say, well, who is the Lord? Then you don't see them no more. Who is the Lord? But they forgot who blessed them and who gave them and did them the way that they are or blessed them to, that they had the full and that they eat, ate good and had a nice... Uh, a car and a good job. They forgot about that. Go ahead and read. Verse 9. Uh -huh. Lest I be fool and deny thee and say, uh -huh. Lord, or lest I be poor and steal uh -huh. and take the name of my God in vain. Oh, and take the name of my God in vain. Because that is a sin. Taking the name of the Lord God in in vain. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, Matthew the fifth chapter because Jesus told you about this. Taking the name of the Lord God in vain. Let's go now. Let's go to Matthew the fifth chapter. Matthew 5. And Jesus told you don't swear by the name of the Lord. A lot of times, you know, you swear by the name of the Lord, you can't perform it. You know, you mean well. 
But a lot of times you can't perform what you said you won't, what you swear by. You can't do it. So it's best for you not to do it. Now, if you won't swear by the name of the Lord, then go ahead and do it. But you better be, make sure that you can perform it. Because the Lord is not going to hold you guiltless. And you better remember whatever comes out of your mouth, you better stick to it. Matthew 5, Matthew 5, and we're going to pick it up in verse 33. Matthew 5 and 33. Go ahead and read it. Yeah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. Uh-huh. Again, ye have heard that it had been said by them of old time, uh -huh. Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oath. He said, look, don't forswear yourself. Perform your oath. That's why it's best for you not to. Swear, if you can't perform it, it's best that you don't. But the Bible swears something, I got it in my hand, and I, you understand, I see it, I know I can do it. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. You know, everybody don't know that saying, right? Mm -hmm. Read that verse again. 33. Uh-huh. Again. Ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, uh -huh. Thou shalt not forswear thyself, uh -huh. but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. Go ahead. But I say unto you, swear not at all. Oh, well, you see what Jesus said? Don't swear at all, because anything can happen, but you done swore, it didn't came out your mouth, right? And you can't do it. The Lord is not going to hold you guiltless for that. You're going to be guilty for that. Written. He's going to charge that to you. Go ahead and read. For swear, I say unto thee, that thou shalt not swear at all. Uh-huh. Neither by heaven. Uh-huh. For it is God's throne. Go ahead. Nor by the earth. For it is his footstool. Uh-huh. Neither by Jerusalem. For it is the city of the great king. Uh-huh. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Uh-huh. But let your communication be yea, yea, uh -huh. nay, nay. Uh -huh. For whatsoever is more than these come of, of evil. He said, look, let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. If you can perform something, you, you want to swear to the Lord about it? Hey, go ahead. But Jesus said don't swear at all. That's right. You understand? So I'm going on with the Lord. But if you want to do it, then okay, you better make sure you perform it. Let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nay. You can do something, okay, I can do it. But if you can't, then say I can't do it. Because a lot of people say they can do things and then they really can't do it. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody understand what I'm saying? Good intentions, you have good intentions, but you can't do it. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, Isaiah the 48th chapter. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Look at what he said about the children of Israel. Isaiah 48 and 1. James 5. I'm sorry, James 5. Thanks, brother. James 5 and verse 10. See, Aaron, you need to put that work in for nothing. <laughs> James 5 and 10. James 5 and 10. Thanks, brother. James 5 and 10. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Because James is going to tell you the same thing. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. James chapter 5, verse 10. Uh-huh. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord uh -huh. an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Uh-huh. Behold, we count them happy with which endure. Uh -huh. Ye have heard the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Uh -huh. But above all things, my brethren, swear not. But above all things. Look at what James said. He says, swear not. You know how we do? Man, I swear for God I won't do it. <laughs> uh -huh. James said, the Lord said, don't swear at all. Read that again. But above <laughs> all things, my brethren, uh -huh. swear not. Go ahead. Neither by heaven, 
Neither by the earth, uh huh. Neither by any other oak, neither by any other oak. Go ahead. But let your yea be yea, uh huh, and your nay nay. Go ahead. Lest you fall into condemnation. Now there's two witnesses saying the same thing. Yes, sir. And more surely the master said it. So he said, and but the master said, I say it to you, don't swear at all. That's right, brother. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna go with. Don't swear at all. He said, let your yea be yea. And your nay be nay. Let's go to Isaiah now. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. I tell you, man, this uh, using the name of the Lord, and, and, uh, using the name of the Lord in vain, that is a big sin. Because the Lord is not going to hold you guilty for this, uh, guiltless for this. You are going to be guilty for this. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 48. And verse 1. <clears throat> Isaiah 48 and 1. Everybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read it. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 1. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, uh -huh. which is called by the name of Israel. Uh-huh. See, and you see what it, you see what Jacob, his name was changed to Israel. Mm -hmm. He said, Hear ye this, O house of Jacob which are called by the name Israel, uh-huh. Which is called by the name of Israel, uh-huh. And are come forth out of the waters of Judah. Go ahead. Which swear by the name of the Lord. Uh oh there, there we go. With, they swear by the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, how are they doing this, though? Go ahead and read. And make mention of the God of Israel. And make mention of the God of Israel. When you say Jesus, who you know, do you know who you're making mention of? The God yes, of Israel. Yes, sir. I'm going to do this. I swear for Jesus and all this type of stuff. Using the name of the Lord in vain. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Swear by the name of the Lord and make mention of the God of Israel. Uh -huh. but not in truth. But not in truth. Nor in righteousness. Nor in righteousness. That's what I meant by what I was saying earlier. You using the name of the Lord. But you're not walking in righteousness. That means you use his name in vain. You tell the people that the Lord's Sabbath is the first day of the week. You tell the people you don't have to keep God's dietary law. You tell the people, look, we're going to keep Easter instead of Passover. Whoa. Well, there ain't no such thing as no 11 bread no more. You use, and then you're going to call on the name of the Lord at this, the name of the Lord Jesus, and then try to attribute his name to Easter? You're using the name of the Lord Jesus in vain. You're using his name in vain. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? Verse 2. Uh-huh. For they called themselves of the holy city uh -huh. and stayed themselves upon the God of Israel. Uh-huh. The Lord of hosts is his name. Isn't that what's going on now? They stay, they keep, they still using his name. Although they're giving you traditions of men. They don't want to go with nothing that was, was written in the book. They give you traditions of men and they still using his name. And they using his name in vain. Because it's not profiting them. It's not going to profit you. And if it's not going to profit you using that name, then you use that name in vain. Let's go to Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans 10. We ain't got long to go. Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans 10. And we're going to pick up at verse 13. Romans 10 and 13. Romans 10 and 13. Go ahead and read it. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Uh-huh. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, wait a minute. You just, you know, you think you're just going to say Jesus and then you're going to get salvation? Don't uh-uh. <laughs> no, sir. But see, this is what, and this is what I mean by teaching things that's not according to the Bible. You think you just go because that's what that's what the Roman Christians teach. They, you just say the name of Jesus and you say. If that's the case, then what you still going to church for on Sunday then? Just say the name of Jesus on Sunday, that's it. What you still going to church for? Read that verse again. Yeah, man. It says, 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh-huh. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not How believed? How you going to call on the name of the Lord and you haven't believed in him? You know nothing about the God of Israel, the God of Israel. You got the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's got dust sitting up on it, but <laughs> you know, you, you know, you can call in his name, but you don't believe in him. <laughs> that is really something. I'm calling on God or I'm calling on the Lord and I don't even believe in him. You know, people wait till they get on their deathbeds and then now they want to call upon the name of the Lord. Whoa. Well, how you want to call upon the name of the Lord and you didn't believe in him? Go ahead and read. And how shall they believe in him uh -huh. of whom they have not heard? Now, how can you believe in him of whom you have not heard? Have you heard about the God of Israel? Don't get me wrong. You can start today of, uh, 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 hear about the God of Israel. You can start today and worship the God of Israel. You don't have to wait till you on your deathbed or wait till you get real sick or, or any of those things, something bad to happen to you. You can start worshiping the God of Israel today. It's not recommended. Come on, bro. Yes, sir. So we don't want nobody to get it confused. We're not telling you don't call upon the name of the Lord. We're telling you, look, walk in righteousness when you call upon the name of the Lord. Then it's going to profit you. Instead of you using the name of the Lord in vain, because that's not going to profit you. Verse 14, read it. Yeah. Uh-huh. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Uh-huh. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Go ahead. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now how are you going to hear without a preacher? Somebody's got to teach you this. I mean, you can read some things on your own, but for the most part, somebody's got to teach you this. I just say a man's got to teach you this. Well, I guess a woman can teach, but just can't stand here. I call a lot of flack about them I did that lesson. Let me move on. Let's go, <laughs> verse 15, verse 15. Go ahead and read. And how shall they preach except they be sent? And how you going to preach except you've been sent? Uh-huh. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace uh -huh. and bring glad tidings of good things. Uh -huh. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. They have not all obeyed the gospel. So now we're going to give you an example of somebody coming preaching in the name of the Lord. They ain't never heard of the name of the Lord. They never walked in his words or walked in his ways. Let's go to Acts the 19th chapter. Acts 19. They were just using his name in vain. And look what happened to him. Acts 19 and 13. Acts 19 and verse 13. Go ahead and read it. Acts chapter 19 verse 13. Uh-huh. Then certain of the vagabond Jews. Now then certain of the vagabond Jews, uh-huh. Exorcist. Stop right there, because we're going to come right back here. I just want to show you what this word vagabond is. We're going to Zondervan's Bible Dictionary. We're going to look up this vagabond. What does vagabond all this highlight? Yeah, man. <coughs> Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary, page 5. 99. Uh-huh. Vagabond. To wonder, in parentheses, a word used in the curse pronounced upon Cain. Now, this word was used uh, when the Lord cursed Cain. Go ahead, call him a vagabond. Uh-huh. The sorcerer's mention in Acts 19.13. Wait a minute. The sorcerer's mention in Acts 19. And 13, the sorcerers. So now, if you worship and doing sorcery, then that's wickedness, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is wickedness. Go ahead. It says, vagabond Jews were professional exorcists. <laughs> professional exorcists. Well, let's see how professional they were. Let's go back to Acts the 19th chapter and pick it back up at verse 13 again. Let's see how professional they were. Go ahead, verse 13. Yes, sir. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits 
the name of the Lord Jesus. Now look, some people had some evil spirits on them, right? So they're going to call over these people the name of the Lord Jesus. But they were false flagging. They were using, they were using his name in vain. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. The name of the Lord Jesus say, uh -huh. we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. See that? Look at that. <laughs> we adjure you by the Lord Jesus whom Paul preaches. They don't even know the Lord. They're using his name in vain. Who Paul preaching? <laughs> Go ahead and read. What happened to him? Go ahead. 14. Uh-huh. And there were seven sons of one Sipha, uh -huh. a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. Uh-huh. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. Uh-huh. And Paul I know. Uh-huh. But who are ye? <laughs> <laughs> See? They use the name of the Lord in vain. He, the, the evil spirit stop it. Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> See, using the name of the Lord in vain. We adjure you and who Paul preacher about the name of the Lord Jesus, who Paul preacher. Don't know the Lord, just using his name. Isn't that how people are doing now? Sure. They using the name of the Lord, don't even know him. Ooh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Better be careful, you, because the Lord is not going to hold you guiltless that using his name in vain. Read that again. Yeah. Back at 14. Uh huh. And there were seven sons of Sepha, a Jew, uh -huh. and chief of the priests, which did so. Go ahead. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, uh -huh. and Paul I know. Uh -huh. But who are ye? But who are you? I don't know you, man. Look at what happened. Go ahead and read. And. The man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. <laughs> Look, the evil spirit that, that was in the man, he was leaped on, jumped on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And I over, don't know you. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Leaped on them and overcame them. Uh-huh. And prevailed against them. Go ahead. So that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. They fled out of the house naked and wounded. Wounded, false flag. <laughs> yeah. Evil spirit like, look, uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know, who are you? And then jumped on them. Yes, sir. <laughs> and beat them up out the house naked. Can you imagine that? You get beat up out your clothes. <laughs> you come out naked. <laughs> that is really something. But they were using the name of the Lord in vain. Verse 17, go ahead and read. 17. Uh huh. And this was known to all the Jews uh -huh. and Greeks Go also ahead. dwelling at Ephesus. Uh huh. And fear fell on them. Why? All. Why? When people read this, why hasn't fear fell on them? Why hasn't fear fell on them? You know, you run around talking about uh, the Lord gonna take you to heaven. When the Lord say He coming down to the earth to to uh, to reign, you using. The name of the Lord in vain. Finish that. Yes, sir. It says, and the fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And his name was magnified. I know he did, boy. They probably, they probably, so man, them cats got, they was preaching in the name of Jesus, and the next thing you know, man, the spirit leaped on them, and they came out the house butt naked. <laughs> and fear fell on the people. Let's go now. Let's go to Acts the 8th chapter because you can bring that spirit upon people if you're doing it in the right vein, if you're walking in righteousness. Acts the 8th chapter. Back up to Acts the 8th chapter. You know you're not using the name of the Lord in vain. You worship the Lord. You're walking in righteousness. Acts the 8th chapter. Acts the 8th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Acts 8 and 9. Will you get it? Go ahead and read. Acts chapter 8, verse 9. Uh-huh. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. See, now he go another guy using sorcery. Just like those sons of Sceva. You, They were sorcerers. So now, 
So now he said this man, the Simon, he was a sorcerer. Go ahead and read. Which before time in the same city used sorcery uh -huh. and bewitched the people Look, of he's Samaria. Going, he going around tricking the people, not their money. Mm -hmm. You know how to, I'm going to let me be quiet. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Giving out that himself was some great one. Uh-huh, because, you know, uh, men think that. You know, they start getting money, then they start, they got their nose up in the air, thinking they some great one now. You know, going around bewitching people. Go ahead and read. To whom they all gave heed, <clears throat> from the least to the greatest. Look, everybody follow them. They, you know, listening to them. <laughs> right? Go ahead and read. From the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And he probably was walking around, yep, I am. <laughs> you know, those have been their ass stuck up. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And to him, they had regard. Because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Uh-huh. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. Stop right there. Now they believe it on Philip now. Philip come in game busters. You know how it is. People walking around. They, yeah, you got one guy talking uh, sorcery or talking falsehood or whatever. And then here you come. Then people start listening to you. Hey, man, that sounds like the truth right there. And you got the book cracked open yes, sir. and reading it to them. And they like, man, that sounds like the truth now. You might not see them again, but still, they like, <laughs> that sounds like the truth right there. Go ahead and read. And the name of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. They were baptized, both men and women. Look, they start getting baptized now. Here come Philip preaching the kingdom of God. Now the people start believing on Philip and get baptized. And guess who else start believing on Philip? Keep reading. 13. Uh huh. Then Simon himself believed also. See, now he goes Simon. He believed too. He started <laughs> listening to the words that Philip was giving, the, the word of God, and he started believing. But can you imagine that? He was a sorcerer going around bewitching people, getting their money. Now he done heard the word of God. He's like, oh man, that's the word of God. Yeah. Can you get, look, I'm going to pay you. Can you give me some of that? <laughs> Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. <laughs> Then Simon himself believed also, uh -huh. and when he was baptized, Go ahead. he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now look, he astonished that uh, Philip now. He walking around with him. Look, baptize me too. Hallelujah. <laughs> baptize me too. And he walking around with him astonished. But then he going to start talking crazy though. Because he still had that God in his belly. And his, the God that was in his belly was that money? Keep reading. Verse 14. Uh-huh. Now when the apostles, which were in Jerusalem, had, excuse me, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, uh -huh. they sent it to them, Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them. Uh-huh. That they might receive the Holy Ghost. See, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Because this is what people were looking for. They looking for that, that spirit. You understand that word of God? Just like you got people that's searching now. They searching for the word. A lot of people haven't found it yet, but they searching for it. Go ahead and read. Because that's how that's how a lot of us got here, man. You know, we searching. I remember my husband, he's, man, oh, he was searching. He going from this church to that church to this church. Next thing you know, he heard Brother Bowie. They said, man, this is it. Then he came home, brought it home. We was looking, man, he said, it went crazy. He come on down to my house talking loud and stuff. I'm, come on outside. Let's go for a walk. What's wrong, man? But then, then the next thing I know, the Lord started opening up my ears. I'm like, man, this is the word of God. Go ahead and read. 16. Uh-huh. For as yet he was fallen upon the none, upon none of them. Uh-huh. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Then laid they their hands on them, uh -huh. and they received the Holy Ghost. Oh, so these apostles that uh, that laid hands on the people, they weren't false flagging, right? They weren't using the name of the Lord Jesus in vain. And that's how these people were able to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because these men believed. They walked in righteousness. They weren't calling on the name of the Lord Jesus in vain. Go ahead and read. Verse 18. Read that verse 17 again. 17. Uh-huh. Then laid they 
their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Uh huh. And when Simon saw that, saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, uh -huh. the Holy Ghost was given. Go ahead. He offered them money. Look, look, look. <laughs> he still got that God in his belly, that money. He said, "Look, uh uh, I'm gonna offer y'all. I'm gonna give y'all some money for that Holy Ghost. Y'all give me this power so I can do it." You know, they were sitting there witnessing the Holy Ghost upon these people. Because you know when that the Holy Ghost part comes upon you, you start speaking it with new tongues. You understand? You won't be, you won't be speaking that old way, you know, uh, I'm going to heaven no more. You ain't saying that no more. Make it plain. You're not saying, well, the Lord's Sabbath day is the first day of the week. No, the Lord's Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week. You start speaking with new tongues when that Holy Ghost come on you. Make it plain. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. It says, he offered them money, saying, give me also this power, uh -huh. that on whomsoever I lay hands, uh -huh. he will receive the Holy Ghost. See, he, didn't, he wasn't given this gift. So he think that he can buy this gift with money. Whoa. Go ahead and read. But Peter said unto him, uh -huh. thy money perish with thee. Thy money perish with thee. Because Peter was a righteous brother. He didn't use the name of the Lord in vain. Go ahead and read. Because? Because even when Peter healed that lame man, he said, well, by what name do you do this? He said, I want everybody to know that by this, by the name of the Lord Jesus does this man stand before you whole this day. Yes, sir. By the name of the Lord Jesus. So he wasn't using the name of the Lord in vain. Go ahead and read. But Peter said to him, Thy money perish with thee, uh -huh. because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Ooh. He said, you know, look, your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You can't purchase the gift of God with money. No, no. I don't care how much money you got. Ain't that true? Go ahead and read. You know, a lot of you see a lot of these preachers, uh, they, I ain't going to call it a day. He got 5,000 people in the stadium. Next thing you know, he raised his hands up. Everybody healed. They falling back and all this. You can't purchase the gift of God with money. You can't do it. If God gave you the gift, he gave you the gift. You ain't got the gift. You don't have the gift. And what are they doing then? Using the name of the Lord in vain. Using his name in vain. Go ahead and read. Verse 21. Uh-huh. Thou hast neither part nor a lot in this matter. You say you don't have nothing to do with this. You don't have no part in this matter. Because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. In other words, get away from here with that. You better go and repent. Go ahead and read. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Ooh. Your heart is not right in the sight of God. Go ahead and finish that. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness. Uh -huh. And pray God if perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Now, let's go now. Let's go to Mark, the seventh chapter. Mark, the seventh chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Mark 7 and 9. Because you just can't just go off using the name Jesus and attribute that name to everything or to what you want to attribute it to. You better be careful using that name. That name is holy and it is sacred. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you just can't you just can't keep throwing that name out there like that. You gotta have some respect for that name. Let's go to Mark the seventh chapter, Mark seven, and we're gonna pick it up in verse five. Mark seven and five. Go ahead and read it. <coughs> Mark chapter seven, verse five. Uh huh. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tra tra traditions of the elders, uh -huh. but eat bread with unwashing hands? So, you know, because that was one of their traditions. They did a lot of washing and everything, right? So he, so they come to, to come to the Lord asking, Why do your disciples, why do they eat bread with unwashed hands? Go ahead and read. He answered and said to them, Uh-huh. Well, Isaiah's prophesied of you hypocrites. Ooh. 
Isaiah, he, you know, see, people thought the Lord was some type of cream puff. You see what he said? Well, Isaiah prophesied to you hypocrites. Uh-huh. As it is written. Uh-huh. These people honor me with their lips. Uh-huh. But their heart is far from me. See, they honor you, honor the Lord with their lips, but their heart is far from them. And so if you honor him with your lips, but your heart is far from him, then what are you doing? You're using the name of the Lord in vain. Look at what he said. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. How be it in vain do they worship me? Uh-huh. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Ooh. Now, you know, I could point the finger and keep pointing the finger at, but I ain't gonna keep pointing the finger. And you know who you are. You saying the Lord said this and the Lord said that, and the Lord have not, have not spoken. You you know, giving telling the people. And giving the people traditions of men and the com doctrines and the commandments of men instead of the commandments of God. You run around telling people, you know, I had one brother even say, you might as well throw the commandments in the garbage. This is a Sunday preacher, because that's what I be talking to on the phone, preachers. And we go at it, right? You know what the other preacher said? Man, you shouldn't be saying that. You shouldn't be telling people not to throw the, the commandments in the garbage. Because the commandments are still, now this was other preachers, the Sunday preachers telling them this. <laughs> say, man, you are, you, are you not scared to say, I'm looking at him, you not scared to say that? Throw the commandments in the garbage, the commandments are ordained unto life. He said, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for God's commands men. If, look, if I'm a teacher I'm teaching vanity, then the people that I'm teaching, what are they going to be then? They're going to be in, they're going to be vain. They're going to uh, teach or, or understand vanity, not the word of God. So they're going to be, them, they themselves are going to become vain. Verse 8, go ahead and read. For laying aside the commandment of God, uh -huh. He holds the tradition of men Go ahead. as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. Uh -huh. And he said to them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God uh -huh. that ye may keep your own traditions. He said you re reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own traditions. Easter, that is a tradition of men. Yes, sir. <clears throat> what does the word of God say? Keep the Passover. Yes, sir. Keep the feast of unleavened bread. Right? Mm -hmm. The book says baptize, every time you see somebody get baptized, they get baptized in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. But they telling you to get baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Now, why are they telling you to get baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost? What the Lord's name is what? Jesus. And the Holy Ghost is coming in what name? Jesus. We're going to leave it right there. But we're going to show you what the Father's name is. Because I told you that earlier, didn't I? Go ahead and read some more. What verse you at? Verse 10. Let's, let's, let's go now. Let's go to Matthew, the seventh chapter. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Matthew 7 and 13. <clears throat> Now, you, you know, if you haven't heard nothing else, you, you really want to take heed to this, what we're about to read. If you haven't heard nothing else, Matthew 7 and 13. Go ahead and read it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Uh-huh. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Uh-huh. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead them to destruction. Uh-huh. And many there be which go. In, there at. See this gate right here is a this gate is wide right here, and it's gonna lead to destruction. There's gonna be many people that's gonna go in through this gate right here. This gate of destruction. Go ahead and read. Because straight is the gate, uh -huh. and narrow is the way which leadeth into life. Uh -huh. And few there be that find. And it. few there be that's gonna find eternal life. Few, boy. I want to be in this number when the saints go marching in. 
So no. I want to be in this number. Amen. This is the gate that I want to go through right here. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find this. Yes, sir. Now you better take heed to this. Because this is the gate you want to go through right here. The gate that's going to lead to eternal life. Verse 15. Go ahead and read it. Beware of false prophets. Uh-huh. Which come to you in sheep clothing. Uh-huh. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. See, they telling you Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But they're using his name in vain. They're giving you Jesus. They're not coming to you in the name of Satan. They're coming to you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But they're not giving you his word. So what good is it if I'm coming to you in his name and not giving you his word? No good, brother. There's no good. It's not going to profit you none. Go ahead and read. Verse 16. Uh-huh. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Uh-huh. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Uh-huh. Even so. Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, uh -huh. but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. See, you know, if he's telling you what's written in the book, then he's bringing forth good fruit. If he's telling you something that's not in the book, then he's, uh, he's bringing forth what? Corrupt fruit. Indeed. Corrupt fruit. Go ahead and read. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Uh-huh. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Go ahead. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit uh -huh. is hewn down and cast into the fire. Ooh. That's that gate of destruction right there. Cast into the fire. That means he went through that gate of destruction. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, by their fruit ye shall know them. Uh -huh. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, uh -huh. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Oh, wait a minute. Just because they say in Jesus? He Come said, on. look, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, you enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, if they say in Lord, Lord, or they say in Jesus, he said they're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, then what are they doing? Using the name of the Lord in vain. Yes, sir. Because, they, you know, it's not going to profit. You're not going to get the, That's the ultimate gift right there is to get into the kingdom, right? Teach. To go into that that uh, narrow gate, right? So no. Read that one more time. 21. Uh-huh. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, uh -huh. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, uh -huh. but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Go ahead. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Stop right there. <laughs> they prophesied in his name. Go ahead, what else are they doing? And in thy name have cast out devils. They casting out devils in his name. You know, like we seen those ones over there, the sons of Sceva. <laughs> they, we would enjoy you by Jesus Christ, who Paul preaching. Them spirits uh, beat them up out the house naked. <laughs> so now, these people right here, they doing the same thing. He said, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils? Go ahead and read. And in thy name done many wonderful works. We done works. many wonderful works in your name. But they were doing it in vain. Because look at what he's going to say. Go ahead and read. And then will I profess unto them, uh -huh. I never knew you. Go ahead. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Woo. Depart from me, ye that work of iniquity. So they were used, they were using his name in vain. Yes, sir. Because he said, Depart from I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that worketh worketh iniquity. Whoa. Using the, the name of the Lord in vain. You better be careful using that name. Better be careful. Let's go now. Let's go to Isaiah. The fourth, no, well, I'll tell you what, I wasn't gonna put I was not going to put do this, but let's go to 2 Corinthians the uh, 11th chapter. 2 Corinthians 11. I'm gonna throw this in here, like my pastor used to say, for a little flavor. 2 Corinthians the 11th chapter, and we're gonna pick it up at verse uh, 4. Pick it up at verse 4. 
2 Corinthians 11 and 4. Go ahead and read. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preaching another Jesus... Uh, uh, we can stop right there. Because <laughs> you, you, you got so many different Jesus out here, man. It, you know, it's mind-boggling. And if you go on the internet and you punch up pictures of Jesus, you got so many different pictures of him, man. Hundreds of them. And everybody's saying that that is Jesus. Using the name of the Lord in vain. So, obviously, at this time, somebody was in the first century right here was using the name of the Lord Jesus in vain. He said, for if he that come and preach another Jesus. Go ahead and read. Who we have not preached. Uh-huh. Or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received. Uh-huh. Or another gospel, which... Ye have not accepted, uh -huh. ye might well bear with them. Skip down to verse uh, 14. And I'm oh, sorry, verse 13. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. 13. Uh -huh. For such are false apostles, uh -huh. deceitful workers. Wait a minute. False apostles and deceitful workers? They come in, in the name of Jesus, but they're using his name in vain. And that's the name of the lesson. Using the Lord's name in vain. I wonder who uh, Paul is telling these Corinthians about. I'm going to be nice today. <laughs> Read that verse 13. For so such I are, said amen. <laughs> Go ahead. For such are false apostles. I'm coming to you with another Jesus. He said, for such are false apostles. Uh-huh. Deceitful workers. Uh-huh. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Uh huh. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Uh huh. But we know what's going to happen to Satan, right? Go ahead and read. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, uh -huh. whose end shall be according to their works. Ooh. And we know. What Satan's end is going to be. So those ministers of Satan, you can you can almost rest assured that that's what their end is going to be. The same end that Satan is going to be. Let's go to Isaiah, the 45th chapter, Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, and we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Isaiah 45 and 18. When you get it, brother, start reading. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. Uh-huh. So I told you earlier, I'm going to show you what the Father's name is, right? So now we're going to show you what the Father's name is. But first we're going to Isaiah 45 and 18. Go ahead and read it. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, uh -huh. he have established it, he created it, not in vain. Uh huh. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Uh huh. I have not spoken in secret and in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. He said, I said, don't seek, don't, don't, I, I didn't tell you to seek me in vain. I didn't tell you to do this. But the children of Israel, they were seeking the Lord in vain, just like people now. Seeking the Lord in vain. Go ahead and read. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Uh-huh. Assemble yourselves. Skip to verse 21. Skip to verse 21. Go ahead. Tell ye and bring them near. Uh-huh. Yea, let them take counsel together. Go ahead. Who have declared this from ancient time. Who have told it from that time. Uh-huh. Have not I, the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. Now he's, he's speaking of idol gods. And you know, gods that, you know, men worship that they made with hands. He's not talking about the other Godhead member. But the, the other Godhead member, men, you never heard his voice or seen his shape. So the other Godhead member, which we know as the Father, he didn't deal with men. Only the one that was known as Jehovah. He is the one who dealt with men. Then he later became known as Jesus. That's right, brother. 
But the one that's known as the Father, we, he didn't deal with man. We're going to show you what his name is, though. Because mm -hmm. we read earlier in Proverbs 30 chapter, what is his name and what is his son's name, if thou can tell. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? The middle of 21. Uh-huh. Have not I the Lord? verse 21 again. At the top? Uh-huh. Tell ye and bring them near. Uh-huh. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who have declared this from ancient time? Uh huh. Who have told it from that time? Who, who, oh, excuse me, have not I the Lord? Uh huh. And there is no God else beside me? Go ahead. A just God and a Savior? Uh oh, wait a minute. You see what he said? Just like we read earlier in Isaiah. Uh, just, uh, the, um, um, I, um, Isaiah said, Jehovah is my salvation. Now he's saying it again. Read that again. Mm hmm. It says, have not I the Lord, uh -huh. and there is no God else beside me, uh -huh. a just God and a Savior. A just God and a Savior, uh-huh. There is none beside me. There is none besides me. Go ahead. Look unto me, uh -huh. and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. Wait a minute. <laughs> he said, look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. See, God is not just the God of Israel. He is the God of all nations. Yes, That's sir. if you want to serve him. Make Go ahead and read. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. Uh-huh. For I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself. Uh -huh. The word is gone out of my mouth uh -huh. in righteousness. Go ahead. And shall not return that unto me every knee. Shall bow. He said that unto me, every knee shall bow, uh -huh. every tongue shall swear. And every tongue shall swear. So unto all the ends of the earth, he's going he to save people, right? Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. I have sworn by myself the word is going out of my mouth in righteousness. And shall not return that unto me. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Who are we talking about here? Let's go to Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians 2. We got two more after this. Philippians 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Philippians 2 and 5. Who are we talking about right here? Philippians 2 and 5. Go ahead and read it. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, uh -huh. which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, uh -huh. but made himself of no reputation. So he said he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Was he equal with God when he was on earth? No. Because he said, my father is greater than I. So when was he equal with God? When he was in the form of God. Well, if he was in the form of God, then what was his name? Jehovah. That's what his name was. Go ahead and read. But made himself of no reputation, uh -huh. and took upon him the form of a servant, uh -huh. and was made in the likeness of men. Go ahead. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, uh -huh. and became obedient to death, uh -huh. even the death of the cross. You know, because some people say God was 100% man, he is 100% spirit. Well, how did he die then? Because his whole body went into the grave. Not part of him. Spirits don't die. <laughs> people want something else, man. Verse 9. Go ahead and read verse 9. Well, for God also have highly exalted him uh -huh. and given him a name, which is above every name. He said he's given him a name which is above every name. Do you know that this name uh, that we're about to read is above the name Jehovah? What's that name? Go ahead and read. That at the name of Jesus, uh -huh. every knee should bow uh -huh. of things in heaven Go ahead. and things in earth uh -huh. and things under the earth. Wait a minute. We just read that in Isaiah. He said that unto me, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. But now he's telling, he said that at the name of Jesus, 
every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. So who was Isaiah talking about when he said, uh, 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 the, Lord, the Lord Jehovah is my salvation? He was talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. And so every knee is going to bow and every uh, tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of who? Go ahead. And that every tongue should confess, should confess uh -huh. that Jesus Christ is Lord uh -huh. to the glory of God the Father. See, we ain't not going to leave him out. God the Father, right? That's right? Let's go now. Let's go to John the 6th chapter. So we should, we trying to find out what, why did he say baptize in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost as well? What is his name and what is his son's name, if thou can tell? So, so far, we can tell that the son's name is Jesus. We can tell that. Let's go, we're at John 6 and 39. John 6 and 39. So he has given him a name which is above every name that every knee going to bow confess to Jesus, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now that name, Jesus, is above the name Jehovah. So now, if the father was Jehovah, if that was a father's name, then he has given him a name above his own name. He has given Jesus a name above his. But let's check something out. John 6 and 39. We got one more. John 6 and 39. Go ahead and read it. This is John chapter 6, verse 39. Uh huh. And this is the Father's will, which have sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We had John... Uh, 6 and 39, right? Hold on one second. Hold on. We had John... We had John 5, I believe, and 39. Yeah, John 5. I'm sorry, y'all. John 5 and 39. I guess I must have got caught up in this lesson, boy. John 5. And 39. John 5 and 39. We get it. Go ahead and read. John chapter 5, verse 39. Uh-huh. Search the scriptures. For in them ye shall think ye have eternal life. He search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life. Uh-huh. And they are they which testify of me. Jesus said, they testify of me. Behold, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Skip down to verse 43. What does it say? I am come in my Father's name. Uh-oh, wait a minute. You see what Jesus said? I am come in my Father's name. Then what is the Father's name? Jesus. What is his name? What is the Father's name? And what is the Son's name, if thou can tell? The Father's name is Jesus, and the Son's name is Jesus. We can tell. We know who Jehovah is. Yes, <laughs> We know who Jehovah, you want to call him Yahweh, we know the same one. <clears throat> Read that verse again, verse uh, uh, 43. 43. Uh-huh. I am come in my Father's name, uh -huh. and ye receive me not. Go ahead. If another shall come in his own name. See, if another shall come in his own name, I didn't come in the name of Jehovah, because that was my name. I'm coming in my Father's name, which is Jesus. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, uh-huh. Him ye will receive. Him you will receive. So what's the Father's name? Remember, he has given him a name above every name. So if the Father's name was Jehovah, then God would have given him a name above his then. But Jesus said the Father is greater than I. So he didn't give him a name above his name. And Jesus laid it out for you right here. I am come in my Father's name. Yes, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. <laughs> now I know I'm probably going to hear a lot of flack about that. You know, calling the, the, the Father's name Jesus and all of that. What do you mean his name is not Yaqua and uh, 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 Ahia and all these other names. And I'm just going to simply tell him. Uh, I speak English, and the Lord said, with a stammering lip and another tongue will I speak to his people. Are you keeping the commandments? Are you using the name of the Lord God in vain? 
Because if you are not, then you might as well get out of my face. Let's go to Job the 35th chapter. This is going to be last. Job 35. I don't usually read um, the other uh, people in Job. I tend to read uh, just Job's writing in Job. But this guy, Eli, Elihu, Elihu, he says something that is true. So we're going to read it. This is not Job talking. This is Elihu talking. But he says something that's true. Job 35 and verse 1. Go ahead and read it. Job chapter 35, uh -huh. verse 1. Uh -huh. Allahu spake moreover and said. Now we're going to leave that right there. Skip to verse 13. What did he say? Surely God would not hear vanity. See, God is not going to hear no vanity. You uh, uh, use the name of the Lord God in vain. You promising people something and swearing to them and everything. God not going to hear no vanity. Read that again. Surely God would not hear vanity. Uh-huh. Neither would the Almighty regard it. Neither will the Almighty regard it. So you speaking things in vanity and speaking the Lord's name in vanity, uh, vain, the Lord's not going to regard it. So don't speak the Lord's name in vain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now we're going to have a reading of the announcements. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 